The tremendous energy released from fusion reactions defines the most advanced aspects of strategic and economic policy for the last decades of the 20th century. It has been an unavoidable fact of life since the Manhattan Project that fusion science has been closely associated with research on thermonuclear weapons. The H-bomb first brought this process of fusion to public attention. Two decades before scientific advances have brought fusion energy to the threshold of energy break even. The H-bomb right there. The H-bomb was the source of fusion even becoming a thing, even an idea. The H-bomb led to fusion research. Why? We know why. They figured out space wasn't empty. They figured out infinite energy and they hit it. The solution to the originally formidable problems of substantial energy release from weapon systems has been an integral part of the advancement of controlled fusion, particularly in inertial confinement fusion. Some form of inertial confinement fusion will ultimately produce the most efficient and useful output of fusion energy in all likelihood. Wow, that's a bold statement to make 43 years ago. Inertial fusion therefore defines one of the most important frontiers of civilian and military science about which citizens must be adequately informed. This is not possible at present, however, because of many of the basic ideas and results in inertial fusion are still classified. Did, did anybody read this before? Did anybody read this textbook before? Before I started reading it live on stream? I seriously wonder if anybody just reads anything. Do scientists actually do anything? Do 99% of academic physicists do anything at all? For many years, we of the Fusion Energy Foundation have fought to change this situation. It is intolerable that the theoretical underpinnings of the science that in the judgment of most knowledgeable individuals will determine the future of the world should be classified. It is intolerable that the leading edge of human thought has deliberately been made inaccessible, not only to the layman who needs to be informed, but also to the working scientist to whom this situation poses unacceptable choice of surrendering an independent role as a civilian scientist or being cut off from access to the principal data that relate to this most important area of research. The physics of the H-bomb is also the key to the unlimited energy of fusion. The possibility of thermonuclear reactions has been known since 1928. And the discovery of nuclear fission 10 years later provided a match for their ignition. The ignition of thermonuclear reactions requires temperatures of 10 to the 8 Kelvin, which can be produced with an exploding fission bomb. And a better choice would be to use a mixture of lithium-6, or deuterium, I think is what that is. Lithium-6 is used as a catalyst in these reactions all the time and i can't get out of my head the fact that there was 500 pounds of lithium ion batteries in the cargo bay these various concepts fall under what is called the thermonuclear booster principle the advantage of such a hybrid fission fusion bombs over pure, pure fission bombs is probably so great that we have reason to believe that practically all smaller nuclear weapons now incorporate this thermonuclear booster principle. It works even with ordinary plutonium. That is plutonium from which the plutonium-240 has not been removed by isotope separation. So this booster principle, we are attaching a fission bomb to fusion thermonuclear material to cause a fusion bomb reaction. There is another aspect of thermonuclear energy that is known as controlled thermonuclear fusion. It requires replacing the fission trigger with some other means of igniting the fuel. 
Recent progress towards this goal has give, gives us real hope that we are close to a breakthrough. The prospect of controlled thermonuclear energy pr promises an abundant and clean source of energy that could last for millions of years. This underlies the extreme significance this energy ho source holds for our future. However, because of the close scientific connection between inertial confinement fusion, which is one of the most promising approaches, and thermonuclear weapons, the government has put this kind of research under the wraps of secrecy. Right there, now I know 100% the MH370 videos are connected to nukes. Why is it suppressed? Why have I been getting attacked? Why has everybody been trying to discredit the MH370 videos? Because they're trying to protect America's nuclear secrets. They're literally trying to protect America's nuclear secrets. I don't even blame them. It's not my fault, though. If anybody's mad about this, just blame yourselves, man. Blame yourselves. I'm not the one who teleported an airplane, guys. I'm not the one that teleported the airplane. You're the ones that teleported the airplane. You use this super magic, I don't know what it is, fusion bomb or whatever the hell you did to the plane. You're the ones that did that. It leaked on the internet. You shouldn't have been recording it. By the way, there is literally no way, like the only reason why they've got this freaking payload connected to this MQ-9 drone, the only reason why they got this huge targeting pod connected to this MQ-9 Reaper drone is because this is their weapon they're deploying. They're deploying a nuclear weapon here, and they're literally recording it. They've figured out nuclear control to the degree where, or fusion control, however you want to think of it, to a degree where it's just become like straight up magic. But that's why they're recording with this camera. They're recording with this camera because they're doing this, and they know exactly what's about to go down. That's why this guy's zooming in and out, because they know this is their weapon. This is just like a day in the in the office to them. Since it is a delusion to believe that such a secret exists, this self-imposed secrecy has had the effect that research performed in government laboratories cannot be checked by the general scientific community. There you go. That one's for Sabine. That one's for all the academic physicists right there, is that if you don't make the science available to the public, then they go, well, where's the science? Where's the proof? And the government says, well, we classified it. Therefore, errors are likely to be made that will cost the taxpayer millions of dollars. The resulting failure could retard progress towards controlled fusion by many years. Spoiler alert, it's 43 years later. It did. Ironically, this eventually could lead to the very energy war fought with thermonuclear weapons that the government wants to avoid. Some people may argue that perhaps we should declassify inertial confinement fusion research, but keep weapon research secret. This is important. Listen, this suggestion, however, is completely unfeasible since certain aspects of inertial confinement fusion research closely resemble the problems in weapons research, making a separation of the two problems impossible. Boom. There it is. He drops the hammer, chat. What have I told you? There is no disconnecting the weapons from the free energy. They are one and the same. They are coming together. There it is right there. They've had fusion research solved for decades, decades and decades. That's why you're seeing plasma balls flowing around in the sky. You're seeing the plasma balls float around in the sky because they've had fusion figured out. Those plasma balls aren't aliens. That's just our fusion research flying around. It's two sides of the same coin. The fusion research and the nuclear bombs are two sides of the same coin. My intuition was exactly correct. It's two sides of the same coin. They had it figured out. This is why we're so confused about everything. They've been gaslighting us and hiding fusion research under the guise of national security for, for thermonuclear weapons.